finally, a G Master lens for Sony crop sensor cameras. But it's not from Sony, not even from Sigma, but it's from Viltrox. Yes, that's right. This is the Viltrox 27mm f1.2. And if you are in a hurry and you don't have the time to finish the whole video, let me tell you this. Before anything else, I would like to officially welcome you to my channel. Thank you for making it past the intro. If you are into cameras, gadgets, technologies, all that good stuff, please do subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't yet. In that case, you won't miss out on anything from this channel. By the way, shout out to Viltrox for sending me this and for making this video possible. Yes, they did send me this lens but they did not pay me to make this review or whatsoever. So I'm giving you my honest thoughts and opinions about this lens. Having that out of the way, let's dive right into the topic. Let me start by saying this is a hefty lens, like for real. Most especially on a crop sensor body, it is huge. Right out of the box, it feels like the Sony 50mm f1.4 G Master which is a full frame lens. From the size to the overall form factor, they kinda give the same vibe. However, the Viltrox is heavier than the Sony just a little bit. My point is, for an APS-C setup, it is not that compact as compared to others. Although there's a reason for that. This is part of Viltrox Pro lineup, hence it has features way above the rest. Like it has buttons, rings, and switches that aren't usually present on a standard lens. It has the focusing ring, the aperture ring, the AF-MF switch, the click on and off switch, plus a customizable button. Not to mention, when you look at the bottom, you'd see the weather ceiling and the USB-C port for firmware update. Again, you don't normally see those on a regular standard lens. To top it all off, the overall build quality of this lens is absolutely premium. A pro level indeed. Good job, Viltrox. Now moving on to the optical performance. Personally, I was blown away by the clarity and sharpness of this lens. I've actually tried several lenses from Viltrox and I must say, this is on a whole new level. Like for real. I am not exaggerating if I say this is very competitive with my actual G Master full frame lenses. Even at its fastest aperture, f1.2, sharpness is all over the place. Especially if just for socials, this is way overkill in my opinion. Hence, if you are a professional, this could be a legit option for you. There is some manifestation of veneering, flaring, and chromatic aberration, but I am telling you, I can't think of any lens right now that doesn't. Not even the G Master and Art lenses. In any case, for these high-end lenses, such imperfections are well controlled plus the fact that it can easily be fixed in post. So not really a deal breaker, at least for me. As for the autofocusing performance, I'd say it's intelligent enough to know the subject and stick to it. Why don't we do the mandatory YouTube autofocusing test? It has both eye and face tracking. For both photo and video, it's quick and very responsive. But take note that it tends to focus hunt or focus breathe in dark situations. Again and again, aren't all lenses. Nonetheless, considering that this is a third-party lens, I'd say it has an impressive autofocusing performance. Totally reliable, I should say. By the way, if you reach this point and still not a subscriber yet, could you give me some love by subscribing and hitting that bell already? That would really mean the world to me. Thank you. Back to the video. About its focal length, 27mm. Since this is a crop sensor lens, this is 40mm effectively. Hence, this is for people who find 35mm a bit wide and 50mm a bit tight, like myself. So with 40mm, we kinda enjoy the best of both worlds, like for real. This is what it looks like if you use it for talking head videos. I personally love the framing. And due to its fast aperture, f1.2, I can really separate myself from the background which I really really like. Now this is what it looks like if you use it for product showcasing. 
with its 0.28 meter minimum focusing distance, I can get the subject closer to the lens and get amazing details. How cool is that? And this is what it looks like if you use it for vlogging. It's a bit tight in my opinion, but if this is acceptable for you, I won't stop you. Enjoy vlogging. And finally, for cinematic shots, I'd say I couldn't be happier. I love the compression and the depth of field in general. Very ideal for portraits. Not to mention that even in low light, it can still deliver due to its whopping f1.2. Great job, Viltrox. At this point, you might be asking, okay, I am convinced I need that lens. So, how much? By the time this video is made, the price of this lens is... For an APS-C lens, it's on the expensive category. But for what it offers, I think it's fair. Again and again, this is a pro-level lens capable of producing that pro-level quality. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. As for a conclusion, if you are invested in building an APS-C ecosystem, you gotta invest on high-end lenses as well. And believe me, this lens should be one of them. A real gem to keep, honestly. There you go folks, I am sure I wasn't able to cover everything, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section or we can connect on Instagram or on Facebook or on TikTok also. Once again, shout out to Viltrox for sending me this and for making this video possible. As I end, if you're getting value from this video, please do like and subscribe for more not super technical but rather practical approach to gadgets and technologies. Until then, thank you for watching. By the way, for some reason, a lot of people are asking me where do you see the filter thread size? Two ways, on the top of the lens or in front of the lens or in the lens cap. So yeah. Such, imper such, Im such imperfections, such imperfections, such imperfections are well, such imperfections, such imperfections, such imperfections are well controlled. Such imperfections.